Hey, let's go, hey, let's go. I'm happy as can be. Let's play together, you and me. Ready, set, come on, let's go. Hey, everybody, it's Mr. David, and I am a player and a sayer, an actor and a storyteller, and I hope you will play with me today. Hey, 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 hey there. Now, hold on, youngin. What are you doing with that pot on your head? Oh, well, hello there, old timer. Yeah, what's that all about there on your head there, that shiny pot? Oh, this. Oh, well, you see, this is part of a story that I'm going to tell today. Oh, I like stories. Yeah, I'm not going to tell it quite now, though. I'll better put that pot aside, but maybe I'll tell it in a little while, okay? Well, I could wait. Yeah, you're good at waiting. I sure can. All right. See you later. Bye. Yeah, mm-hmm. Yeah, I brought a little bit of the outdoors in with me, all the old leaves and whatnot, because I love the leaves, and I always get good ideas from the leaves, and they're so pretty, too. Look, isn't that a pretty leaf? I love those colors, yeah. I'm wearing some of those colors myself today here, yeah. Well, <clears throat> I'd like to tell the story in a little while, but first I want to play our little show-and-tell game. Do you remember our finger play from yesterday? We played with our hands for show-and-tell. Our hands could pretend to be all sorts of things. Seed, sprout, tree, flowers, bees, hive, and honey. Let's do that story together, okay? See how well we remember it. Give me one hand flat like that. One hand with two little fingers like that. That's it. This is the little girl who comes walking along, right? Here is the child, meek and mild, who planted a seed one day. So come on, you can do this with me. She gets down on her knees and she plants that seed. Dig, dig, dig. Plant, 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 pat, pat, pat. Whew. Then she went out to play. Whee! Here is that seed. Now it's under the ground, right? So one hand down, one up, up like that. Good. Here come the roots growing down out of that seed under the ground. Here is a tiny little sprout opening up and growing out. While the roots are growing down out of the seed under the ground. Here is the tree that sways about. It grew from the tiny tender sprout. Bing! While the roots were growing down out of the seed under the ground. Are you still following me now? All right, come on now. You know what happens next? The buds and the flowers all bloom in the tree, right? Here are the fragrant flowers that bloom top of the tree that sways about. It grew from a tiny tender sprout. Bing! While the roots were growing down out of the seed under the ground. Here come the busy honey bees that zoom around. The fragrant flowers that bloom a top of the tree that sways about out of a tiny tender sprout. Bing! While the roots are growing down out of the seed under the ground. Here is that hive, which is the home for the busy honey bees that zoom around those fragrant flowers that bloom atop of the tree that sways about out of a tiny tender sprout. Bing! While the roots are growing down out of the seed under the ground. Remember what's in that hive? Yeah. Here is the honey in the honeycomb, made in the hive that is the home for the busy honey bees that zoom around the fragrant flowers that bloom atop of the tree that sways about out of a tiny tender sprout, bing, while the roots are growing down out of the seed under the ground. Oh boy, now it's time for the harvest. Yeah, here comes that child, meek and mild, who Eats up the honey in the honeycomb, made in the hive that is the home for the busy honey bees that zoom around the fragrant flowers that bloom atop of the tree that sways about out of a tiny tender sprout. Bing! While the roots are growing down out of the seed under the ground. The very same seed that distant day the little child planted when she went out to play. Thank you for doing that story with me.
That story is in your hands, so you take care of it. Hey, I thought you might enjoy taking a look at some trees and bees and honey cones that go that we're talking about in that story. Here are a few pictures. You know, playing that game, show and tell with our hands is fun to do, but you can play that game with other things too. I've got a toy I like to play with here. Maybe you like to play with one of these as well. I've got myself a red ball. That's one of my favorite toys. Now, it's a shape that we call a sphere. You may have heard that word before, a sphere. Yeah, sounds kind of like a sneeze. Sphere, mm, excuse me. But this red ball can play show and tell as well as my hands can. I can show and tell and show and tell. Let's see if you can tell what I am showing you. Guess what I'm pretending this ball to be. Uh, hey there, mister. Here's my money. Could I have a scoop of strawberry, please? Thank you. On a cone. Uh-huh. Mmm. Mmm. Can you tell what I'm showing you? That's right. It's a scoop of strawberry ice cream. I made it strawberry because it's a red ball, but you can have any flavor you like, kid. Yeah. Show and tell, show and tell. Let's play show and tell. Oh, look at my lovely ruby on my finger. What am I showing, huh? Can you tell? It's a ruby ring I'm wearing on my finger. Uh-huh. Show and tell, show and tell. You can play show and tell. Here's another show. See if you can tell what I'm showing you. Hey, everybody, let's have some fun. A waka, 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 waka. What was that? Have you ever seen a clown nose like that? Big, red, and round, right? That, like that? Yeah. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Hey, here's a show and tell of something that comes from a tree. See if you can tell me what you see. Mm, it's yummy. And it makes a kind of crunching sound like that when you bite into it. One of my favorite foods. It's a fruit. And I bet you can tell. It's an apple. Oh, 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 I love apples. Well, hi there. It's Annie Oakleaf. Yeah, I do, I do. I love apples. That reminds me of a riddle. You want to hear it? Oh, I like riddles. I sure do. I do. Okay, here it goes. It's a singing riddle. I'll sing it for you. <laughs> me, me, me. Okay. There is a house. It's round and red. No window or door. No table or bed. Only a chimney up on the top. If the chimney breaks, the house will drop. But if you open the house up wide, you'll see there's a star or two inside. Oh, wow, that's a nice riddle. I think I can guess, though. Oh, can you? Can you guess? Can you guess what it is? Uh-huh, because you saw what I was pretending. I was pretending the ball was a apple. Is that the answer to the riddle? Oh, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed it is. Good job. Well, thank you very much, Annie. I like playing with riddles. Yes, a house that's round and red. Well, an apple is round and red. It doesn't have a window or a door or a table or a bed, but it does have this little chimney on the top. See that stem? Uh-huh. When the stem breaks, then the house will drop. Boom. But if we cut that house open wide, we'll find a star or two inside. Let's see what happens. I'm going to take my little knife, and I'm going to take a slice right down the middle of my apple. Okay, now there, there's my apple. I sliced it right across the middle. Let's see what's inside. Look at that. There's a star. There's another star. See the star shape inside my apple? Yeah. That star has seeds inside of it. That's where the seeds are in the apple. You look at it close, you can see it's like it's shining in the sky, huh? That brings me to the story that I, the old timer's been waiting for. It's a story about a man who loved to plant apple trees because when he saw that there were stars inside, he thought apples must be a little bit of heaven on earth. His name was John Chapman, and he lived hundreds of years ago in the Northeast 
near the Appalachian Mountains. Well, he decided he would plant apple trees for all the people that he met all across the country. He went traveling on his feet across the mountains and the Ohio River Valley, sharing apple trees everywhere he went. Now, he didn't want to have to carry a lot of things with him, so he tried to make do with as few things as possible. Well, that's why when he needed a cook pot, he brought a cook pot along with him, but he decided he didn't need to have a hat because the pot could double for his hat. He'd wear it as his hat during the day when he was walking, and when people saw him coming with that pot on his head, they knew that was Johnny Appleseed. Yeah, that's what they called him because they knew that he planted apple trees for people. Mm -hmm. They forgot his regular name. They just called him Johnny Appleseed. And Johnny Appleseed went around with a pot on his head. And, well, this time of year, when the leaves were all getting bright and colorful, just like that, was the apple harvest time of year. That's when the apples were the ripest and they were coming off the trees. So Johnny Appleseed gathered up a big pot full of apples and carried them with him up into the mountains so that he could sit down and start doing his harvest. He, he needed seeds, you see, for the next planting season, and so he'd slice open the apples, and he would take out the seeds from the stars so he could plant a little more heaven on earth. He called that harvesting the stars. So he dumped out his apples, he got out his knife, and he started slicing open the apples and singing the song while he was harvesting the stars. There is a house that's round and red, no window or door, no table or bed. Only a chimney up on the top of the chimney breaks, the house will drop. But if you open the house up wide, you'll see a star or two inside. La 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 la. He heard a growling sound. Urgh. He looked up from his work. He looked over across the clearing. And there at the edge of the colorful trees, he could see a shiny black nose attached to a big black bear. Uh oh Johnny Appleseed was staring at a, a big black bear at the edge of the forest. Now, he knew a few things about black bears that are maybe good to know. We have black bears around the neighborhood where I live because I live in the Appalachian Mountains here, too, in North Carolina. And I'll show you some of the, app of the bears that uh, come around in our neighborhoods here, see? Bears are hungry at this time of year. They don't like the winter, you see? They sleep all winter long. That's months at a time. And in order to sleep all winter long, they need to be as fat as they can be. So right now, this time of year, they're eating as much as they can find to make themselves as fat as possible. Now, bears are kind of like people, and they'll eat anything. So when Johnny Appleseed saw that bear over there, he thought, I'm looking at a hungry bear who's willing to eat anything to get fat for the winter. I hope he's not willing to eat me. But then he thought, wait a minute. I'm all skin and bones. No bear's going to get fat on me. What that bear really needs is something sweet and sugary. And, you know, bears will eat anything. Maybe this bear would like to eat some of my apple. I'm just taking out the seeds, you see, but I could share the rest of the apple with the bear. So he tossed that apple over to the bear. Now, the bear had never seen such a thing, so you know what he did? He, he sniffed it. He licked it. And then he ate it. Boom! <clears throat> and then he went away. <laughs> and Johnny Appleseed went back to work. Phew! La 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 The bear came back and brought the missus with him. There, across the clearing, was Papa Bear and Mama Bear. And Johnny Appleseed thought, well, I guess they like those apples. So he tossed another apple to the bears. And you know what they did? You can do it with me. They sniffed it. They licked it. And then they ate it. Boom! <clears throat> and then they went away. And he went back to work. La 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 They came back. There was Papa Bear. And there was Mama Bear. And there was Little Bitty Baby Bear. So Johnny Appleseed tossed them some more apple. And you know what those bears did? You can do it with me. They sniffed it. They licked it. And then they ate it. Boom! 
Yeah. <laughs> and then they went away, and he went back to work. La 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 la. La 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 la. La 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 Oh my goodness. There was Papa Bear and Mama Bear and Baby Bear and Brother Bear and Aunt Bear and Uncle Bear and Sister Bear and Grandma Bear and Grandpa Bear and all the bears had come there to have some apples. So Johnny Appleseed tossed them the apples and you know what they did? They sniffed it, they licked it, and then they ate it. <coughs> and he worked as fast as he could, slicing out the seeds and tossing over the apples, harvesting the stars and sharing the fruit, and the bears ate it. Oh. <coughs> And by the time he reached his last apple, he had fed the last bear. And the bears just sat there staring at Johnny. And he sat there staring back. And he thought, oh, I wonder what they want now. He thought, I hope they're not considering me for dessert. Mm -hmm. But then he thought, wait a minute. Even for hungry bears, they're... They've got to be full now. Their, their bellies are full of applesauce. <laughs> they can't be hungry still. Maybe there's something else they want. I wonder what that could be. Hmm. Then he thought, you know, when I have a big meal like this on a sunny day in a beautiful clearing like this, I, I feel a little sleepy, like stretch out and take a nap. Maybe these bears would like a nap too. But if I was all covered with hair like those bears, I'd feel kind of itchy. I'd want to scratch first. Maybe these bears need a little scratch to help them get off to sleep. So Johnny Appleseed reached over, and he scratched one of the bears right behind the ear. <laughs> oh, she liked that. Scratched one under the chin. <laughs> oh, he liked that, yeah. Scratched one down the back. <laughs> oh, she liked that, yeah. Scratched one on the belly. <laughs> yeah, they really liked that. Those bears stretched out so they could all get a scratch and help them fall off to sleep, and Johnny Appleseed went from bear to bear helping them get to sleep that day. <laughs> and soon they were all asleep. And Johnny Appleseed thought, this would be a good time for me to go. So he put on a spot and he picked up the seeds, but then he thought, wait a minute. It was lucky for those bears that I happened to be here today to give them apples and scratch their backs. But I'm going away. I'm not coming back. What's going to happen to them next year when they're hungry and itchy? He thought, you know, I am sharing these apple trees with all the two-legged people I meet, but these here four-legged people, they deserve a little heaven on earth just as much. So Johnny Appleseed planted an apple tree for every bear that was sleeping there that day. And then he went away. And he traveled far and wide across the Ohio River Valley, and he built his last log cabin in Fort Wayne, Indiana. And that cabin is still there. You can go see it to this day in Johnny Appleseed Park. But you won't find Johnny Appleseed there. No, this was hundreds of years ago, and he's long gone. But I'll tell you something. If you go hiking up into the Appalachian Mountains when the leaves are all getting bright and colorful just like that, and the apple harvest is coming in, <coughs> they say you can find a high mountain clearing all set about with colorful trees where in the middle there's a stand of wild apple trees growing. And if you're careful and you're quiet, you'll see the bears come out of the woods and go up to those apple trees and Start munching on all the apples that are growing there until their bellies are full of applesauce and they're nice and fat and happy. And then you'll see those bears lean up against those old branches and trunks of those trees and give themselves a scratch. And as they scratch, they say, those bears will growl out a little tune. <laughs> You hear those bears growling so happily, you understand how 
hundreds of years later, Johnny Appleseed is still able to feed the bears and scratch their backs. about Johnny Appleseed, and you know one of the things I like about that story? What? Oh, hi there, Annie. What do you like about that story? Well, I like the idea that a person can do a simple thing like planting a seed, and that good deed can go and grow for years to come. Oh, yes, that is a good deed. I'm so grateful that somebody planted the tr seed for my tree, otherwise I couldn't be here. Yep. Me too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And bye-bye to you. I tip my pot to you. I hope you enjoy playing and saying as much as I do, too. Hey, 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 thank you for the play. It's been fun to be here with you today. Bye-bye. Hey, let's go. Hey, let's go. I'm happy as can be. Let's play together, you and me. Ready, set, come on, let's go.